So I see a lot of people online saying, oh, just follow the factory oil change intervals. The engineers know best. Well, I have information for some people. I don't think the engineers are the ones writing your oil change or your manual intervals for your new vehicle. In fact, I think it's the marketing and the other people that run these companies at Toyota, GM, Ford, that decide your oil change intervals should be 10,000 miles. I think if you asked most engineers, they'd probably say what Lake Speed from the Motor Oil Geek channel on YouTube says, which is on your initial break-in, change it often, and then you can go to maybe 5,000 mile intervals after your initial oil change. That's what we're gonna to discuss today. So today I wanna to show you actual lab data that I submitted in. So I changed my oil at right about 500 miles and we're gonna see if Lake Speed Jr., the motor oil geek is full of it or if he's actually onto something here. Now this is an oil analysis from my twin turbo V6 hurricane engine, three liter hurricane in a Ram 1500. For those of you who don't know, Lake Speed Jr. is the motor oil geek on YouTube. Many people don't agree with him, a lot of people do. So I'm here to kind of independently test his break-in procedure, that's what I wanna do. This is kind of phase one of his testing. So here's what he says his break-in procedure should be on a new vehicle. Your first oil change is at 500 miles, you dump the oil, you flush one clean quart through, and then you don't change the oil filter. Do it again at 1500 miles, flush the oil, leave the same oil filter in, more on that later. And then your third oil change is at 3000 miles, and then 5,000 miles. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna test these intervals to see if we really do have a higher level or elevated level of metals in the oil. Now, like some viewers out there, I, when I heard like a 500 mile oil change interval on your break-in, I thought, oh, that's probably a little unnecessary. However, I actually sent mine into Blackstone and I was kind of surprised with the results, honestly. So most everybody knows when you get a new vehicle, uh, you're gonna have in the first really 5,000 miles, a lot of that metal is breaking in, smoothing out. So a lot of the metal ends up in the oil, circulates through the engine. And that's what a lot of people think are causing or at least contributing more to the problem that we see in modern engines where they're failing a lot earlier than normal. So yes, high metals during your break-in period are normal, but that doesn't mean they're harmless, right? So you have a higher content of metal and that's what Lake Speed's talking about in his videos is it's very normal to have more metal, but it's also something you want to get out of your oil. You want that oil purged from the system because that's going to be running through your bearings and everything else. And the biggest part is most of the metal that they're detecting here in these oil change analysis, uh, the metal's smaller than what filters capture. It's lower than uh, 20 microns. So that's kind of the big reason for doing these frequent oil changes upfront on a brand new vehicle. All right, without further ado, here's my first oil change. I'm going to do future videos here as well. So as you can see at the top there, this is my Ram three liter hurricane engine. I did it at 600 miles. Lake actually recommends that people do it at 500 miles. I'm running 0W20 factory oil. I might upgrade that to either 030 or 040. So here at the top, they say this is a standard first look at a new engine's oil. It's common to find break-in assembly material in the first few fills like copper and silicone. The extra material should clear out after a few more oil changes, leaving behind more normal wear profile. For reference, we keep universal averages specific to the three liter hurricane engine after about 4,500 miles of oil use. Your results should resemble those after a few more oil changes. Depending on the oil change interval, they said no fuel, no water or coolant is evident in my oil, which is good. 600 miles, it shouldn't be. It's good that with a direct injection engine, I'm not seeing fuel delusion. And so this to me is sort of evidence that the motor oil geek is spot on with a break-in period for a new vehicle, especially these uh, turbocharged engines. So my Ram, the Hurricane is on the left in those two columns. And as I do more analysis, they will just go from left to right. The one on the far right there, the universal average, that is the 4,500 mile inter intervals for most Hurricane engines. So look at mine, mine is six on aluminum, the universal average at 4,500 miles is five. So I already have more aluminum in my oil at 600 miles than someone does at 4,500. Same thing goes for iron, I have more iron. Now this is normal, it's the first five or 600 miles. This is pretty typical. Uh, I have a lot more copper, 23 uh, parts per million of copper versus seven. I've got more moly as well. 
more boron, more silicone, like uh, the silicon's very, very common as well with all the seals and the RTV. I've got more calcium. I have a little less magnesium, more phosphorus, and more zinc in mine. And then I have more barium. So all in all, my viscosity looks fine. I'm not seeing anything crazy with the results of the oil, no fuel dilution. But I think this really proves out that what the Motor Oil Geek on YouTube says, uh, that you really should dump your oil at 500 miles, 1500 miles, 3000 miles, and 5000 miles. I think this is kind of proving out that he is correct. I don't, you know, you can't really read this any other way. My engine has more metal in a lot of cases of the important metals here in the oil already at 600 miles than a typical one does at 4,500 miles. Now, all of that metal by flushing it out, I flushed it out and then I also took like a quart or two of fresh oil, flushed that out, and then I filled back up with fresh oil. So we're gonna do another test at 1500 miles. We'll see you know, how, how spot on Lake is with that as well. And then I believe at 3000 or 5000, I'm gonna change the filter out and do another change. So I think there's a lot of people on the internet that say motor oil geek, maybe maybe he's you know just doing it for views. He doesn't really know what he's talking about. And then a lot of people really enjoy his content. I think the best thing to, to take away from this is what Lake says himself, science over speculation. So rather than speculating on a vehicle or speculating that the engineers had something to do with writing the manual, why don't we just test ourselves? And really what I wanted to do with this video was hopefully help people decide whether or not they should waste the money on oil. This oil cost me 55 bucks and it wasn't really that big a deal for me to do it. 40 bucks for the oil analysis. If someone's doing this at home, you don't really need to do your own oil analysis. You just need to follow the protocol. And for those of you wondering kind of what is a normal number for all of the, the important metals on break-in, the Motor Oil Geek actually put this little infographic together, engine wear over time. So he shows you know where it's contaminant, breaking in, continuing break-in, fully broken in, and sort of what your parts per million should be for each metal there. So I'm kind of average on all of these. And in most categories here, I'm I'm continuing my break-in, which is good. So I'm not like all the way on the super high metal range. And when I looked at my oil, it actually looks pretty good. I didn't find any chunks, any visible glitter in my oil, which I was really happy with. Now, you know what's kind of cool on these uh, Ram Rebels and Warlocks and RHOs? They have a, a lift, so I can just scoot right under here and I don't even need a jack. Another nice thing about the inline six is right there, there's the oil plug and there's the oil filter. Really nice location. It's gonna just drip straight down. I don't have to clean anything off most likely. And it's just gonna be a super easy oil change. 14 millimeter and uh, I'll probably change out. Those drain plugs have a little gasket on the inside but I'll probably change those out maybe every three or four oil changes. That's usually what I do. I thought this would be fun. I had a relatively relatively clean oil bucket here and I've got this large magnet. I'm just gonna pass this around. I wanna see if I've got any large metal chunks in here just to kind of give it a run through. Really uh, not much on here, if anything, really. Just wanted to see if there was any sparkles. Uh, I'm not seeing anything. Now, most of it should be probably caught in the oil filter, if there is any, but I've seen a lot of people pulling debris out of those tundras and GMCs and other things on early oil changes. So yeah, it's a good sign. So what do you guys think? Did I waste my money? I'm gonna do this again at 1500 miles, 3000 miles, 5000 miles, do oil analysis, and then I'm just gonna do regular 5000 mile intervals and probably jump up to 030 or 040 oil. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you think this sort of metal is actually going to hurt the engine long-term, this is sort of the idea that many people lease. A lot of people don't keep their vehicles very long. And that's probably the reason why they have these long intervals. And a lot of people just don't care about thinking about maybe how long their engine's gonna last. Will it hit 200, 300,000? A lot of folks aren't really worried about that nowadays. I personally am, and I like just passing on something that was taken care of to the next person in line. So thanks for watching. Till next time.